Congratulations, you have finally reached the end of the geometric poster design series. You've learned so much in this series. You've learned how to use layers, how to use lines, shapes, text, and color all in Adobe Illustrator. And now we're gonna put it all together to create our awesome geometric posters. I'm excited because you're gonna to get to use the fonts that you chose, the colors you chose, and your own inspiration to create something that's unique to you. Uh, and I'm really excited to see it. So I'm gonna jump into the video in just a second before I wanna let you know that I've created a Facebook group just for this series. Uh, that's a public group. I'll link it in the description below, but you can join that group once you're done and share your geometric poster. I would love to see how it turns out uh, and we can all share with each other and get feedback and hopefully get inspired. So really excited. Congrats on making it to the last video. You did it. And without further ado, let's jump in. All right, so here we are in Adobe Illustrator. As always, make sure that you download the file from the link in the description below. I've got this set up as an eight and a half by 11 size piece of paper. If you're in the US, that's one of our standard paper sizes, so it'll be easy to print. If you're not in the US, you can follow along this way or you can use your own paper size, it's up to you. But before we jump in actually designing it, we're gonna to go to our libraries and I want you to make sure that you bring in those colors that we've been working with so far. So go ahead and bring them in like we did in the color video and add them to your swatches. For me, I also added a slightly lighter version, bringing my total number of colors up to six. You may want to do that or you might be fine with the five that you have. Either way, once you have your colors in, we're gonna start by designing by making our grid. So go to your grid tool, which remember is under your line tool. And if you just drag, it'll give you a grid, which is good, but we want it to match these guidelines that I've given you here. So we'll start from the top left and hold shift to lock our dimensions because you want them to be square. And there we go. Remember, if you want to change however many units are in your grid, what you can do is just click and then change your dividers. I personally would suggest sticking with four by four dividers because that'll give you a five by five grid. And that's a good place to start. It'll be a lot of work for you if you make your grid really dense because you'll be designing for a lot more squares. So I'd recommend starting with this. Okay, going back to what we learned in our layers, we're gonna make sure that this one is in the grid layer. So we'll lock the grid layer and go to our art layer because that's where we'll be working. Next, what we'll do is I'm going to create some type. So I'll click here with the type tool and I'm gonna type Adobe Illustrator and then return poster design. Okay, my letting's way too big right now, but get it tight, scale it up with the scale tool. Looks pretty good. I usually like my type to be pretty tight. All right, and then to make it kind of look nice, we can do some small type underneath it. So that's gonna be using the type area tool. And then within there, what I normally do is I will use the, uh, there's a blind text generator online. Basically it just gives you filler text, which is just good while you're working on a project. Uh, so it's kind of nonsense. I think it's Latin or something. I'm not really sure, um, but it's just a good place to start because it looks like real text, even though it's not. So I can always come back and add something here that uh, you know makes a little more sense. But for now, I think I should be happy with this. Looks pretty good. I'm making it all caps. I'm gonna space it out just a little bit. Maybe go down to 20. Great, and then I'm gonna color it my lighter color. And then for Adobe Illustrator, I'll probably do the top in gold and the bottom in my blue. Okay, so here we are. We are at the beginning of designing our poster. It's gonna be really exciting. So I'm gonna show you one cool tip that you'll wanna use that can be really helpful, and then I'm just gonna let you loose. I'll kind of speed up my video and I'll pause along the way if there's things that are worth noting. Um, but basically, we're just gonna all go for it. So. Um, one thing that I wanna make sure you know, I'm clicking L to use my circle tool. I'm gonna drag a circle out. And so say I wanted to split the circle maybe across the middle. There's a lot of ways to do this, but one simple way is to click C, which is your cut tool. And then I'm just gonna cut along each of these anchors. And now I have two separate circles. One thing to note though, is you'll still need to do command J. Remember that join, because that adds a line back here where we divided it. And then if you want to do it again, I could cut at the top here and then cut at the middle here where it says intersect because you're going to intersect with the grid behind you, which is helpful. And then Command J, Command J. And there we go. Now I've just divided the circle. So there may be times when you create something um, that you want to divide. And so that's a good way to divide it. But I just want to show you that before we get started. And now I'm just going to get going. I'll speed it up, like I said, um, and I'll pause on the way for little things if there's anything that you might want to know.
So one thing to note here is that I'm connecting the different parts of the grid in unique ways. So for example, what I just did here is I connected these different corner marks in the grid to make kind of this angled rectangle trapezoid kind of thing. Um, and so that's also a fun way is just to like try to look at the different shapes um, within the grid and like, hey, what, what connects? What makes something that's interesting? I don't really like that, but, but you know, you wanna be kind of connecting all your different shapes here, which can be really give you some unique, um, I guess, creations and things to see. Something else to note is that it can be fun to take shapes like this one right here um, and move it around into a different spot um, and then sort of change how it looks so that you have kind of familiar elements happening. So as you can see, I have like two of these circles that are split. I have these that are similar to where they exist in the same little box. So for this one, I'll just kind of mix up the color so that it feels distinct, but you start to have some kind of familiar graphic elements throughout your composition. I can take this triangle and replicate it and maybe just change the color to something else. So kind of using this, this repetition will help you create um, some interesting things within your composition. And also another note is to be looking. So for me, it seems like this corner is really blue. You know, like it's got the blue, it's got the yellow. I'm missing a lot of my red. Um, and so I'm going to bring the red in to this whole area here and then I'm gonna move it to the back. So, okay, look, now I have some red um, and I'll probably actually just do the same over here as well. Um, but it's important to make note of, does your composition feel balanced as far as your colors? Um, and I feel like this looks pretty good to me, but that's something to be aware of is what is your what do your colors look like? And maybe you want colors to be heavier on a certain side and lighter on another, but you know, for me, I want everything to be nice and balanced. So I'm just kind of trying to look and see, are my, do my yellows feel balanced? Do the dark blues feel balanced? You know, or at least in a way that feels exciting and, uh, and cool. All right, so this looks pretty good to me. The what we're gonna do now to save it is we are going to click Shift Command S and we are gonna save this as a PDF. Um, so within the PDF, just click save. Um, you don't really need to worry about this right now. And this will be what, what a file that you'll use whenever you want to print it is using that PDF. What we also want to do is we want to bring it into Photoshop to use as a mockup. So I'm going to do shift option command S kind of a crazy shortcut, uh, but you can also find it up here, file, export, save for web. This is the quick and easy way to do this. And then I'll export this just as a JPEG. Um, I'm going to probably scale it up a little bit. It doesn't really matter what size, as long as you have this little lock on here. Click save, save it. All right, and now I'm going to open up Photoshop. This is a mock-up that's linked below. Uh, it's a mock-up by Mike Delsing. So if you see right here, I know we haven't used a lot of Photoshop, but we're just going to click over here on poster, double click, and it'll open up this file right here. And so all we got to do is click file, place embedded. We're going to find that JPEG that we just made click enter and paste it in there. So this mockup is a little bit taller than eight and a half by 11, but it works pretty well. I'll save this with command S and close it. And then there we go. Now we have our mockup. If you want to change the color of the background, which I kind of want to do, I'll just click here, solid color. There you go. That looks pretty good. So great. So I'll save it. And then I can do the same thing I did in Illustrator, shift option, command S. Save this as a mock-up. All right, now all that's left to do is jump to our Facebook group, go ahead and join the group, and then you can go ahead and post your geometric poster design, the one that you just made, that mock-up, and share it with the world. 
Man, what an awesome journey it has been. We have learned so much in Adobe Illustrator. I hope that you feel more confident, especially if you were a beginner and had never touched it before. Hopefully this is the great first step to get you going in your process. If you like this series, please feel free to subscribe uh, because I'm posting new content all the time and I'll be doing, I'm gonna be doing more intense Illustrator series, things on Photoshop, all the works, and so you don't wanna miss it as you continue to grow in your journey in graphic design. But again, thanks for sticking along for the ride and I hope you have an awesome day.